started in November of 1915, the 107th Timberwolf Battalion was officially known as the 107th Battalion, Winnipeg. It was a Canadian expeditionary force eventually deployed to the Western Front during the First World War. Once in Britain, it was converted into a pioneer battalion and later absorbed into engineering brigades. From all the information I was able to find, at least half of the soldiers were indigenous. So in this video, I will talk about the 107th Glen Lyon Campbell and the racism the indigenous soldiers experienced from the Canadian government after the war. The Timberwolves' first commanding officer was Lieutenant Colonel Glen Lyon Campbell. He had served in the Northwest Resistance of 1885 with Bolton's Scouts, an irregular mounted unit. At the Battle of Batoche in May, he was promoted to the rank of captain. After the resistance, he made his living hunting, ranching, and trapping. He married Harriet Burns, the daughter of Ojibwa chief Kisi Kuwinen, and Campbell learned to speak Ojibwe and Cree fluently. As a result, he was able to develop strong ties to the Manitoba First Nation before the World War broke out. The Canadian government did not want to recruit Indigenous for fear this would violate the treaties, which stated that the Indigenous peoples could not be forced to fight for Canada. Many of those who tried to enlist were turned away, even non-status Indigenous, which meant they were not bound by any treaty. Once the Canadian government opened recruitment for Indigenous, over 4,000 enrolled. Glenn was there lobbying the government to allow him to raise an Indigenous unit and he was appointed as the new unit's commanding officer, a rare honor for a 52-year-old man. Once he had whittled down the more than 1,700 applicants to the almost 1,000 officers and men needed to form an infantry battalion, they began training at the newly built Camp Hughes in Manitoba. Many of the new recruits could not speak English, so language training was provided, and Campbell would often conduct training and administration matters in Cree and Ojibwe. The 107th Timberwolf Battalion landed in Liverpool, England on October 25, 1916, and like many of the other CEF units, was scheduled to be broken up for reinforcements, as there were more units than were needed by the Canadian Corps. Campbell fought to keep the unit together, as he believed that the Indigenous soldiers would be treated poorly or subject to racism in other units noting that their ability to adapt themselves without complaint to awkward circumstances and bad weather, which rendered their efficiency as a pioneer battalion far above average. The 107th was kept together, but designated as a pioneer battalion. These units were trained not only to fight as infantry, but also carry out limited engineering tasks, such as digging and repairing trenches, hauling ammunition, erecting and repairing barbed wire fences, laying light rail tracks from rear area supply depots to the front, and building plank roads so artillery could be pulled forward through the mud. Among the battalion were several indigenous runners, including Tom Longboat and Joseph Keeper. Longboat won the Boston Marathon in 1907 and competed in the 1908 Olympic Games. Keeper was an Olympic long-distance runner who competed in the 1912 Olympics, where he placed fourth in the 10,000-meter race, a record which has still not been bested by any Canadian since. Both were dispatch runners, a dangerous job that involved carrying handwritten messages to the Western Front. The 107th Timberwolf Battalion was disbanded and absorbed into the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd Canadian Engineer Brigades on May 28, 1918, shortly after the passing of Glen Lyon Campbell. After the war, several Indigenous soldiers were in need of assistance due to injuries sustained in the performance of their duties to the country and the war effort. There was, however, very little support for them, as no government department was willing to accept responsibility for these soldiers. There was a disagreement between Indian Affairs and Veterans Affairs as to which department was responsible for the soldiers. Veterans Affairs said that due to the fact they were Indigenous, it was Indian Affairs' responsibility. And Indian Affairs said it was the Veterans Affairs' responsibilities, as they were soldiers. This went on and on until both departments finally forgot about these soldiers because neither wanted to pony up the money. 
It wasn't until 2001, with a consensus report recognizing their service and sacrifice, and an offer of public apology and compensation in 2003, that Indigenous soldiers were finally given the recognition they deserved for their service to the country. In recent years, Indigenous soldiers are being celebrated for their contributions, including Aboriginal Veterans Day on November 8th and a National Aboriginal Veterans Memorial in Ottawa. The soldiers of the 107th Timberwolf Battalion and the other Indigenous soldiers across Canada are no longer forgotten.